Okay, so today we're going to um, dig into something kind of disturbing, honestly. Yeah, definitely a bit unnerving. It's about how some governments are targeting people, like intimidating them, even though they're living abroad. We're talking about uh, diaspora communities. Right, these are people who've left their home countries, but it seems their governments haven't quite let them go. Exactly. And we're not just talking about, you know, keeping tabs or whatever. This is about straight up control. Yeah. Exactly. And for this deep dive, we've got this um, this joint report that came out from the Dutch Counterterrorism, so that's NCTV, and the intelligence agencies, AIVD. Yeah, and what makes this report so striking is that it's coming from the Netherlands. Right, like you don't think of the Netherlands and immediately jump to authoritarianism, you know? Exactly, exactly. It's a country known for being, you know, very open, very tolerant, and yet this report shows that even there these governments are finding ways to reach beyond their borders. Yeah, and it gets scary. We're talking threats, harassment, the whole nine yards. Mm. And and it really cuts to the core of what it means to live in a democracy, you know? Yeah. Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, those are under threat, even in a country like the Netherlands. Okay, so let's, uh, let's break it down a little. The report names eight countries that are doing this. Right. Iran, Morocco, Pakistan, Turkey, China, Eritrea, Syria, and Russia. So, I mean, I guess the question is, what makes these countries, um, why these countries, you know? Yeah, well, they're all coming from different places politically, but I think the common thread is that they all view their diaspora communities with a kind of um, suspicion. Yeah. They see them as both assets, A and D threats, almost like a double-edged sword. How so? Well, these communities, they have knowledge, they have connections, they have influence that their home countries want to tap into. They can be really useful, right? But at the same time, those very same things, the knowledge, the connections, the influence, they can also be used to criticize the government, to challenge the narrative. And that's what these regimes are really afraid of. Gotcha. So it's like control the good, silence the bad. Exactly. And they'll use whatever means necessary to do it. And the report, like it gets into specifics. They talk about Uyghurs in the Netherlands who've received threats. And these threats weren't even directed at them. They were directed at their families back in China. Right. And that's a common tactic, unfortunately, going after the families. It's a way to silence dissent without, you know, leaving fingerprints. Right. And it's it's just cruel. It is. And it's effective. Because exactly. what are you going to do? Right. Are you going to risk your family's safety to speak out against a government that clearly doesn't care about human rights? The report also mentioned something about Russian scientists in the Netherlands, like getting intimidating phone calls. And it all started after the whole you know, situation with Ukraine. Yeah, there have been a lot of cases like that. The message is clear. Stay loyal or else. And I bet this is all just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, absolutely. The report emphasizes how difficult it is to get a true sense of the scale because, understandably, people are terrified to come forward. Of course. Who wants to be the one to speak out and then something happens to their loved ones back home? Exactly. And that's what makes this so insidious. This culture of fear, it prevents people from exercising their basic rights and it allows these repressive regimes to act with impunity. And the scary thing is this isn't just a Dutch problem, right? Not at all. This is happening in democracies all over the world. It's a global issue. So what can be done about it? I mean, the report doesn't really offer any concrete solutions. No, it doesn't. And, and honestly, there are no easy answers. But I think the first step is awareness. Recognizing that this is happening and that it's a threat to democratic values everywhere. And then we need to start having some difficult conversations okay. about how we balance security concerns with protecting fundamental rights, how we support diaspora communities that are facing these kinds of threats. It's messy, but we need to grapple with it. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, it really makes you wonder, could this be happening in my community, in my city? What would I do if I were in their shoes? It's a lot to think about. Yeah. And honestly, it's a pretty unsettling thought to end on. This report, it's like opening a door to a very dark corner of global politics, and it forces us to confront some uncomfortable truths about the world we live in. Absolutely. I think that's one of the most valuable things about this report, even if it's uncomfortable. It's a wake-up call. We can't afford to be complacent. Not anymore. Uh, not anymore. 
All right, well, that's our deep dive for today. Thank you.